So this is, this is at Grey Court, um, second week of September, and I'm here with the, the students. The last three of the day, we've had about 12, well, no, how many have we had here today? About 60, well, no idea. Quite a lot. Well, loads, isn't it? About 20, I think, actually. So they, when they hadn't got the overalls on, they stood in the cricket nets safely behind mesh, and there's about 100 on the playing field at the moment. But this is the colony that has, has been opened up. And um, we've used plastic as a viewing screen. It's about 10 or 15,000 in there, but they're quite happy at the moment. I've got my glove off actually to take this film, so they're not approaching my hand, which is fortunate. So, have you got any more questions? That's the main thing. What type of honey is this? Um, their types of honey vary greatly, and it depends upon the nectar flow and the, and the plants in urban areas. You get a great variety of honeys because people buy lots of flowers, put them in the back gardens, and, uh, and enrich the area. If we were out on a farm in Surrey somewhere that only grew arable crops um, and had cows, pasture, and sheep, there'd only be the hedgerows left. So it would be like a desert with very little nectar around. Um, there may be some clover in the pastures, but um, and some in the hedgerows, various flowers in the hedgerows, but. Compared to urban areas, some of the farming areas could be quite um, desolate as far as bees are concerned. Because but that's there are like blackberry bushes there, is there like to be like a lot of blackberry honey from those because it's rot so close? Uh, yeah, there is a lot of blackberry in the perimeter around the school, so that does produce a good ne nectar flow and that does help them stay alive and breed lots of bees. I will be feeding some um, garlic infused sugar syrup in a moment to help boost them for the winter. Um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, Grey Court School, Kingston.